بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم افتح علينا بحكمتك وانشر علينا برحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا عليم علمنا من علمك ما ترضى به عنا ولا تآخذنا بما تعلمه منا يا حليم خلقنا بخلق الحلم وحققنا بحقائق العلم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Inshallah, what we do in this session is uh, to pick up where we left off, <coughs> how we relate to our actions, how we relate to our performances. And then uh, we'll continue to talk about things that pertain to um, self-development and tarbiyah. And we'll go... In, we'll find a connection from the first to the second, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. But I think it would be really good to look at wisdom number 95 and number 96. <clears throat> he says in 95, رُبَّمَا فَتَحَ لَكَ بَابِ الطَّاعَةِ وَمَا فَتَحَ لَكَ بَابِ الْقَبُولِ وربما قضى عليك بالذنب فكان سببا في الوصول. He says it may be that God opens for you the door of obedience. ربما فتح لك باب الطاعة. It may be that God opens for you the door of obedience. وما فتح لك باب القبول. But he does not open for you the door of acceptance. That would be very disastrous. Because then you will be preoccupied with your obedience. And you will be taken by yourself. And then your obedience becomes disobedience. And this is what happened to the Khawarij. Because they were given obedience, but the door of acceptance was not there. And why that's the case? Pride and arrogance and lack of adab. Um, they came from certain tribes, mostly, in the center of Arabia, <clears throat> which is Nejd, and which is where Riyadh is today, the capital of Saudi Arabia. And the Prophet warned us against Najd. He warned us about Najd. He has many hadith about that. And there's a famous hadith. These are in Bukhari and Muslim. And these are mutawatir hadith. They're very common. And uh, he blessed the Yemen. And then he blessed the Sham, Syria. And the Najdi said, bless Najd. And the Prophet didn't answer. And he said, bless Najd. And the Prophet didn't answer. And then he said, bless Najd. And the Prophet did not answer. He never blessed Najd. He never put blessing there. Although there are blessed people there. And he said, if it were not for the two signs that appear there, because Najd with regard to Medina and Mecca is in the east, so the sun rises over an edge, and the full moon rises over an edge. Those are the two signs. So he said, if it were not for the two signs that arise over an edge, I would not even look in that direction. That is where the two horns of Satan will appear. The horns of Satan. In one transmission, the horn of Satan. Qarn shaytan Another one, Qarn shaytan The two horns of Satan. And those are the khawarij. And one of my teachers, Shaykh Muhammad Mahmoud bin Zidan, who was a great Mauritanian, may Allah have mercy upon him, was a great saint who lived in Medina. 
he said also, Qarn here can mean generation, the generation of Satan, meaning men and women who are Muslims but who belong to the party of Satan. Because they worship, they pray, they fast, but the door of acceptance is not opened. And they become arrogant and proud, and they fight the Muslims, and they divide the Muslims, and they curse the Muslims. And these warnings are very important. So the Wahhabi movement, it comes out of Nejd, the same background. And it is the second horn of Satan. That's what this Mauritanian told me. And he told me this at a time of great tribulation in Medina. And uh, we won't go into that anymore because we're not here to talk about that. But that's very important. Anything that comes from Nejd, beware. Because the horn of Satan comes from there. And the Khawadij came from there. <clears throat> and then the Wahhabi teaching came from there also. So you have to be very careful. These are people that God opened for them the doors of obedience, but not necessarily the doors of acceptance. And then they become arrogant, they become pri proud, and that obedience becomes the greatest disobedience of all. That's the nature of the party of Satan among Jews and Christians and Muslims, every religious community, because a religious community can very rarely be destroyed from the outside. Religions usually can live through persecution. They just buckle down. And we have lived through persecution many times. Persecution can destroy the faith if it's really big persecution. You know, where you just wipe it out. That's happened to us in our history a lot. But after persecution, the deen will come back. I'll go to Russia, inshallah, uh, later this week to Tataristan. You know, the Tatars, Russians and Tatars, you can't tell them apart. The Tatars ruled the Russians over 250 years in the name of Islam, the Golden Horde. Golden Horde is really interesting, really interesting. And then you have Islam in Russia even before the Golden Horde, the Bulgars. The Bulgars who had come into Islam about a thousand years ago. And we'll visit all of that, bi iznillahi ta'ala. We'll visit all of that. Um, now, what was it I was going to say? Yeah, so uh, the Russian Empire, this begins when Ivan the Terrible conquers the Volga River. The Volga River is extremely strategic in Europe extremely strategic. And the Tatars controlled the Volga River. They knew that if, and they, they had the whole Volga River. And if they control the Volga River, they control basically everything. So he, take, he destroys the Tatars. This is in the 16th century, the 1500s. And he takes the great mosque of Kazan, which we were going to, and he destroys all the mosques. But the beautiful mosque of Kazan, he takes it apart and he brings it to Moscow and he makes it rebuilt as a church, which is St. Basil's Cathedral in the Kremlin. We'll see that, and you've seen it, with the, with the funky onion domes and all those crazy colors. That's tatters. Those were the tatters. Everywhere Muslims were in the classical period for a thousand years, Whatever they build in architecture or art is perfectly suited to the people around them. So that Tatar mosque was so beautiful in Russian eyes that it became like the logo of Russia, St. Basil's Cathedral. And that's a Tatar mosque. Look at the cultural genius that Muslims had. It's incredible. In China, everywhere. But... <clears throat> He made all the Tatars become Christian or be killed. Over 200 years later, Saint, uh, not Saint Catherine, she wasn't a saint. She was a queen, though, a powerful queen, Catherine the Great. She was a German, actually. She was a really great queen. Catherine the Great then becomes the Empress of Russia, 
And this is the time of what was called the Enlightenment. But also Russia had been conquering all these Muslim peoples you know, Central Asia and elsewhere, Dagestan and so forth. So now they have lots of Muslims in the empire and they simply cannot convert them. And they don't want to anymore. It's the Enlightenment. So she declares Islam to be an official religion of the Russian Empire. And when she does that, the Tatars come back to Islam en masse, who have been forbidden to be Muslims for over 200 years. We have lots of examples of that in Muslim history. It's amazing. Islam puts down roots that are deep, and you can cut them off, but they will come back as soon as they can grow again. <clears throat> and they come back. So oppression is bitter. It's bitter herbs. But it's very difficult to destroy religion through oppression, as we see today in Syria, for example. I mean, what are this, what's the hell the Syrians have lived through all these years? Or in Libya, God deliver the Libyan people and the Syrian people, all these beautiful people. Give them their freedom, their dignity again. Okay? But you destroy the religion through the inside. And that's what we call the party of Satan. Among Jews, among Christians, among Muslims, it's always there. And they will present themselves not just as Christians and Jews. The Zionist movement is the party of Satan among Jews. The party of Satan. The Zionists continually do things that are forbidden by rabbinic law. You know, for example, the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. Do you know where that's built? It's built on one of the most sacred Muslim cemeteries in Jerusalem. That is forbidden in every law and in rabbinic law. And the rabbis told them, you cannot build it here. And they did anyway. Why? In your face. In your face. Zionism is the greatest danger to Judaism that ever has been. That ever has been. And they're the party of Satan. This Christian right wing, the fascist right wing in the United States, they are the party of Satan. That never means that all the people in them are diabolical. No. A lot of them just don't know any better. Okay, but the party of Satan, you know, that they destroy the religion from the inside. And so you have to be aware of that. And you have to be wise. Not everyone that has a beard is pious. Not everyone who prays five times a day is a person you can trust. Beware whom you take your dean from.